I figured we're, we're all going to go for our uh, thoughts on Dr. Boschman. So I decided to take a slightly different tact, and I just want to tell you a story about the day in the life of being a student in Dr. Boschman's labs. <laughs> so forgive me, I'm going to pull in a few of the other graduate students and uh, uh, expose you uh, as well. <laughs> uh, this this kind of came in a little bit into the work that Christian and I started uh, on the kind of radio. We've been building up algorithms and and theories and thoughts on how to make cognitive radios work, and we put together this piece of software that could then uh, optimize and control radios, and at the same time, through other means, we had these nice Proxim radios. Uh, they, were work they worked at 5.8 gigahertz. Proxim, I know, is owned by Broadcom or something like that, but they, they were up at 5.8 gigahertz with all sorts of what we like to call knobs to turn, so modulation and frequency and channel coding and you know, whatever else. So a handful of different knobs. And that, that's what our software, what the kind of radio was supposed to do, is, is optimize those knobs to adverse situations. Well, Christian had this, this idea. Well, why don't we try to make a demonstration of our cognitive radio, what we now know as the cognitive engine, working with these Proxim radios to optimize them under some condition, videotape it, and then we'll have some nice uh, demonstration in the bag that we can then show to everybody. But what happened was, we take the, the video camera, videotape us kind of going over what the purpose of this experiment was, the explanation of what the cognitive radio was to do this optimization. Uh, and then the, the, the trick of the whole thing was that I was going to be explaining the, the cognitive radio software while manipulating this video stream of me talking to the camera while it's being fed back live over the air. So if there was enough resolution, you could kind of look down through the, uh, through the video screen that I was sitting next to as this, this computer was receiving this video stream of me talking. So I, we, we go through the explanation. I'm not very good on camera. Uh, Christian's arguably a bit better uh, than I am. But after a few false takes, I finally get it right, explaining that what we're doing, how the setup is happening. Uh, we have the video stream coming over nicely. I then say, now we're going to start the interferer that's going to be operating at the same frequency, and we're going to optimize around this. And we specifically said, we're not going to change the frequencies, uh, because that's actually the easy solution. What we wanted to do is, can we find a solution using all the other knobs of the radio uh, to overcome this interference? And so that's what we told the kind of radio to do. It then proceeded to do it. As, as the interferer comes on, you can see the signal quality sitting next to me degrade video quality. I start the kind of engine, it finds a solution, it finds the correct solution, it reprograms the radios. Uh, 30 to 45 seconds later, the Proxim radio is finally reset. Now this was in the old days of hardware radios, before we had our nice software radios that you can just uh, plug in a new XML file and have it uh, uh, adjust itself almost instantaneously. So half a minute to 45 seconds later, you see that this video uh, quality picture comes back up. We, that's kind of when I realized that a lot of us working on this project really actually had something going here. So that video got a lot of play. Uh, we we kind of shot that around whenever we could. It became part of papers. And, and eventually, that's the basis of research that's now caused so many students to have graduated under uh, Charles's tutelage. Uh, Many papers, award-winning papers, dissertations, I'll pump to myself, award-winning dissertations, uh, and at least one book so far. And that's kind of the, hopefully gives you an idea of what the, the kind of freedom of, of ideas and expression that Charles fosters in his research groups to be able to, to kind of go out, do this, interact with all different parts of the, uh, the group in order to come to uh, what some might think is a simple solution, but in the face of it, uh, turned out to be a really interesting problem with a really good solution uh, that kind of brought us to uh, well, where we else, a few of us seem to be today. So thank you, Charles. Thank you.